Money FM 89.3, best of prime time. Market View on Money FM 89.3. Welcome back to Money FM 89.3. As we near the end of a very, very memorable first quarter for global markets, the question now, one of the big questions heading into the second quarter is what is in store for greater Chinese markets? And there have been a number of reasons why markets there have been fairly unpredictable. We did see that markets from Shanghai to Hong Kong did suffer from notable losses since the start of the year. And what will we have to make of these uh, regulatory headwinds and also concerns about rising COVID-19 infections in the mainland and how China might also be connected to some of the geopolitical concerns we're seeing coming out of Russia and Ukraine. Well, today on Mighty FM 89.3, we are pleased to be joined by Mr. Peter Chun, who is the founder of Silver Bear Capital out in Hong Kong. He is here to share with us his outlook uh, for the second quarter and what he made for the, of the th- first three months of the year for chi- markets across greater China. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. We always enjoy having you on the show. And welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Good afternoon. All right. So, Peter, despite some steadiness in recent weeks and a few days where we actually saw some strong outings, especially in Hong Kong, this has been a fairly forgettable first quarter for Chinese equities. Shanghai, for one, falling by about 11.5% since the start of the year. Shenzhen down 19% since uh, the start of January. The Hang Seng also down about 6%, actually, and also a lot of volatility hitting Hong Kong markets. You are closer on the ground seeing what's happening in greater Chinese markets. Tell us what you think were the biggest reasons and drags for stocks in the first three months in your neck of the woods. Well, first of all, I think the COVID will be, uh, will be one of the members slowing this down. And then um, the continuous uh, credit cloud uh, in China and the kind of unpredictable property indicators uh, fluctuation has also caused quite a bit of problem. Uh, in in both the sentimental way and and the actual um, uh, uh, balance sheet effect um, <laughs> way as well. So I think uh, these these critical elements still play a very strong uh, um, uh, foothold in installing the, the the Chinese market and Hong Kong market at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to get to the COVID-19 situation there in just a little bit. But whenever we talk about Chinese stocks or stocks in general anywhere across the world, we have to also talk about uh, the geopolitical concern of the world right now, which is Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which is threatening to upend uh, global geopolitical relations and status quo. The big question, of course, given that China does have fairly warmer relations with Moscow than others, actually, many are looking to see how China might, at how China might respond there is a risk of being seen as siding with Moscow, of course. But is there actual opportunity for Chinese markets and the economy in the seeming chaos um, uh, uh, that, that, we're, that we're seeing unfold at the moment out on that side of the West? Yes, definitely. Um, as you can see uh, from the past, actually, um, quite a long time ago, actually, Russian and, and China relationship has improved quite a bit. Um, and, of course, uh, this relationship uh, flourished through uh, helping each other and then resolving critical regional um, um, peaceful or peacemaking issues in the past as well. Mm-hmm. And um, with this particular moment, I think China had tried to play the peacemaker uh, in the region rather than taking side. Now, of course, uh, uh, both sides are called upon China's uh, response, uh, not just Russia. I think all the other guys uh, on the other end had also uh, called. And I think uh, recently European leaders uh, is expected to lobby Beijing um, to use this influence on Moscow to, to, to stop the conflict. Uh, both on, I think, uh, for the start from, from an economical point of view, and now to become a geopolitical player point of view at the same time. Uh, this obviously will give um, some opportunity to China because I think everybody is trying to make sense now about the whole thing on the table. And uh, this will give China a better position to help a tri-party tabling discussion rather than a single party discussion. Mm-hmm. But long term, do you think this actually plays in Beijing's favor? Yes, I think the uh, the the this particular situation would allow China to to better play a global 
global um, uh, member uh, with regards to, say, for example, G20, and um, uh, increasing the importance of uh, 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 China uh, on, the, on the global reach. So this would hopefully uh, assist uh, with potential sanctions from U.S. This would uh, build a better, better bargaining chip for, for China you know, in negotiating uh, with something like that uh, later on. And uh, I've been part of the uh, redundancy right now in China's market right now as part because, you know, there is obviously the possible delisting pressure from all the Chinese companies in the U.S. The U.S. sanction, that all plays well into the formula about having uh, people would like to actually exit or partially exit um, uh, uh, of their Chinese uh, holdings uh, with their with different stocks uh, for the last quarter. Mm. So, I mean, we're probably talking about, you know, quite a bit of money that overseas funds have actually um, uh, decided to leave China uh, for the first quarter. So hopefully these these uh, elements that you just kind of mentioned would hopefully will play to, to the Chinese side a little bit uh, in the second quarter to come. Right. We're still meeting to Peter Chun, founder of Silverberg Capital here in Money FM 89.3, taking an assessment of uh, Chinese markets as we head into the second quarter. And you're right, Peter, it seems that perhaps this could actually lift, not just because of uh, the possible long-term opportunities uh, that might play towards China's favor from the conflict, but there's also some internal issues that could be lifting in China. We did hear from Vice Premier Liu He calling for more support and also for the tech crackdown to be wrapped up sooner rather than later. Um, is this indeed a turning point perhaps for Chinese stocks, but, or will it continue to lose ground as we've seen in the first quarter? Are, are things actually going to perhaps improve in the medium to long term, or might uh, the losses we've seen in the first three months perhaps continue? Well, I think the uh, the Chinese stock had uh, obviously a lot of people had backed on it um, since the last probably six months of time, and um, there is um, a verbal uh, uh, support from the Beijing side about wrapping up the, the Chinese tech um, uh, situation, and that obviously had already uh, gave confidence to the market, allowing uh, these stocks to recover quite a bit uh, since the last two weeks. So. I think this is going to continue, but obviously going down the road, I think um, solid policies need to be implemented because uh, this would help the sentiment uh, in the market for the time being. But um, going into the second quarter, I think um, Beijing needs to come in with some solid policies that, that would assist in order to, for this to, to continue. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the big... Uh headwind now that we're also taking stock of right now is also the uh, COVID-19 situation that seems to have spooked markets yet again. Yet again, It seems to be making its round around the financial centers of uh, Ch- Greater China, starting in Hong Kong. Of course, I don't have to tell you what's been going on and a lot of the uncertainty with regards to how COVID-19 has uh, reared its ugly head up in your city. Um, Shenzhen also coming out of a uh, phased lockdown and Shanghai entering another one as well. Um, what, how big of a role or how big of a risk might this pose for mar- Chinese markets and the economy heading into the second quarter, Peter? Well, um, obviously, if we are going to walk out from, from the COVID situation, both from China and Hong Kong point of view, then obviously a uh, rebound uh, from the property market will first happen. And obviously after that, uh, employment uh, and then retail spending, that will actually then um, put, put the whole... Um, engine uh, kind of in nice speed again. So we would probably see if we are able to walk out from COVID at all. Um, and if not walking out from COVID, there would be some sort of a hybrid systems which the government is going to implement so that it allows at least international travels um, and policies to allow um, foreign companies to to still have confidence in the area um, at least um, not relocating uh, uh, from Hong Kong or China uh, back to somewhere else, um, then obviously a, a rebound uh, in the market will surely happen uh, in, in the second quarter and third quarter. All right. So sp- staying on that point, Peter, where you talked about potential rebounds in the second quarter, are there is there anything that investors should be aware of in terms of sectors and potential dip buying, which many have started to say, you know what, Chinese stocks look pretty attractive at the moment. Is this a theme that might be worth uh, paying attention to in the second quarter, or are there too many headwinds, perhaps, that might uh, l- render this uncertain? 
Yes, it's actually there is a, good, a lot of good buy right now in China and Hong Kong. So um, we we tend to look at um, uh, uh, the, the sectors like uh, the new new energy sectors, the sustainable uh, uh, companies who has a, a ESG component uh, wrapped around them. Uh, we are we are also looking definitely into the tech still, and we tend to look at uh, the tech company who has a semi global reach as well. So that is just not local local, but they are also working abroad as well outside China. Uh, biotech wise uh, is yes and a no uh, at the moment. So um, I think people will probably look for the tech side. Uh, there is some actually uh, uh, good stuff actually still uh, in the in the pond, so I would recommend um, investors to kind of closely look at um, the 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 companies who have actually being able to decentralize themselves and be able to actually behave a little bit more strategically during the last year, so that they're actually leveraging the situation in China and and with the COVID uh, to their advantage as well. All right. Peter Truen, founder of Silverberg Capital, thank you so much for joining us today on Money FM 89.3 in China with us. Your thoughts on the recent movements in Chinese markets. As always, I wish you and your loved ones continued health and safety during these times. We look forward to the next time you can join us on the show. Before acting on the information on Money FM, please consider if it's suitable for your own investment objectives, financial situation, and risk tolerance. To listen to more great interviews, download our podcasts at moneyfm893.sg or download our audio app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O. Available on Google Play or the App Store. Play or the App Store.